Rainy Park evolved in tribute to the late Thomas Rainey, a resident of Ravenswood, Queens, who dedicated almost 25 years and most of his wealth to build the Queensboro Bridge, connecting Long Island City to Manhattan over the East River. In 1871, this expanse was proposed to be the Queen's anchor for the Blackwell Island Bridge. Rainy Park, in previous years, was one of the largest parks within the confines of Ravenswood, located in an area of exclusivity with open plots of land along Vernon Boulevard. Industrialization in this area commenced as far back as 1870 and since then has served as an urban green zone in a growing skyline of factories and industries that have populated the area. In recent times, however, the area has seen a number of new development projects, specifically the construction of apartments and condominiums. The area overlooks the East River and Roosevelt Island, and because of this aesthetic value, it has become popular for recreation, hosting events, screening of movies and live theatre. There are physical, biological and human components of Rainy Park. The biological components are diverse, with tree species such as red maple, green ash, calorie pear, little leaf linden and London planet tree scattered throughout the park. These trees were planted by the Urban Forestry Division of New York City. There's a variety of commonly found grasses, microorganisms and small mammals observed as well. Looking at this map created of Rainy Park, specific areas can clearly be identified, such as a play park whose design was created by the popular Japanese artist Noguchi. There is also a baseball pitch and a basketball court, together with a large expanse of open area. This area is used for a number of activities, such as dog training or play area, relaxation, barbecues, together with little league, sporting and many other events. Related infrastructure include benches and fences along the waterfront and main road, paved paths for both cycling and pedestrians, street lights and a number of trash and recycling bins distributed throughout the park. The land has a relatively flat topography with a few undulating sections, and the entire expanse, excluding the paved areas, is covered with grass. There is a good distribution of signs with safety precautions and restrictions in the area as well. There are also bathroom facilities and a maintenance or service room. After conducting a few interviews within the area, it was observed that 99% of the individuals were unaware of Thomas Rainey and the history of the park. As a result, New York City Parks is trying their best to change that by erecting signs all over the park that explains the history that lies behind the name. The park's historical science program was first thought of by City Parks Commissioner Henry Stern back in 1989. Since that time, there has been growing concerns that anthropogenic influences may negatively impact the area. It was observed that in order for the park to maintain its functionality as a green zone within a sea of industries, it is critical for this space to be monitored consistently to ensure sustainability. Therefore, scoping and site characterization should be some of the first baseline assessments that are conducted frequently to assess the level and severity of impacts occurring here. Upon visiting the site, there were a few human subsystems that stood out and can be directly related to the overall health of the park. From the flowchart seen here, three broad headings were created and are as follows. Maintenance, alteration and construction, proximity to urban area and park usage. Looking at the first subheading, maintenance, alteration and construction, it can be noted that any of these stated activities can cause disruptions to the natural soil structure, microorganisms, biodiversity and overall well-being of the ecosystems occurring here. Activities such as the construction and maintenance of pathways, as well as the use of heavy machinery, can cause the soil to be compacted and compressed which limits the movement of activity, not only for soil-dwelling organisms, but also water molecules that may be rich in nutrients. This can lead to further damage by causing the soil to crumble and become nutrient-poor, which may support limited growth. Another activity which is an extension of this is the alteration or addition of courts to support more sporting events or even general expansions of the park. Increasing the amount of paved areas within the park limits infiltration of water and other nutrients and also increases surface runoff. At present, there is already a large area that is paved to hold the basketball court, play park, baseball pitch and other pathways for riding and walking. In order for the integrity of this green zone to be ensured, no additional areas should be paved. 
Although, in one of the interviews conducted, there was a suggestion to have an allocated area for barbecuing since this activity is one of the restrictions of the park. The second subheading is the proximity to the industrial area. This is where most of the direct and indirect major negative influences occur. Because this area has a very urban nature, it is almost obvious that the effects of pollution will directly affect it. The biodiversity is relatively low here, and a lot of species of trees and grasses are introduced species by the New York City Parks Department and the Forestry Division. This is to encourage birds and other wildlife a place of residence, either temporarily or permanent. It should be further examined, however, if these introductions had any impact on the natural ecosystems occurring here. There are a few small mammals, such as squirrels and birds, that have not been affected by the busy city environment and hence do not display any form of stress. One suggestion, however, for New York City parks is to monitor the species diversity, the abundance, the status and migratory patterns, at least on a seasonal basis. Pollution can be categorized into air, noise, water and solid waste. The vicinity of the park includes an array of construction and industrial type factories and buildings. Therefore, a lot of emissions will be released into the atmosphere. It is also located to the city area of Manhattan and Roosevelt Island, which both have smog clouds over them that are even visible during the day. This is most likely caused by the heavy amount of traffic and vehicles on the road in the area. Both contributions have impacts on various cycles, such as the hydrological cycle, the nitrogen and carbon cycle, where the molecules from the emissions can be incorporated into the water molecules, eventually condensing and creating disruptions at every point of the cycle. Noise pollution has many sources. Firstly, because this is a park which hosts a number of events, as well as its use for recreation, there will be a lot of noise coming from either music or general excitement from activities or events. This area is also located on the outskirts of the city and in itself is an industrial area. Hence, noise is generated through heavy traffic and activities. An example of such activity is the construction. The last form of direct pollution is through water. There is an auto body shop at one side of the park as well as a wholesale supermarket on the other side. There is evidence that both of these institutions, together with other industries bordering the river, have dumped chemicals and solid waste into the river. In an interview conducted with a retired employee from Con Edison, a company that provides electrical gas and steam to New York and Westchester stated that after testing the water in the East River, high levels of PCBs and oils were found. There is also visible evidence of solid waste being dumped such as trolley carts from the neighboring supermarket, as seen in the picture here. According to a nearby Delhi owner who frequently visits the park, there is also significant amounts of litter, especially after large events. This brings us to the last point on park usage. Direct and consistent contact with individuals can cause the rapid depletion of the park's ecosystem and biodiversity. Hence, more awareness should be promoted on the impacts of littering and more stringent rules and restrictions should be implemented to maintain the general aesthetics. In conclusion, the evaluation sought to examine the anthropogenic impacts on Rainy Park. The research and observations made within a two-week period indicated that there is in fact evidence of management within the park. In addition to this, there is need for greater stakeholder participation and education to conserve and protect one of the long-standing green spaces within Long Island City. However, some aspects of human interaction may require further research to arrive at a more verifiable assessment.